time. So this is the presentation on empires. And, uh, the more I got in this, the more complicated it became. So all of the things you're hearing now are, are entirely uh, sort of provisional. So the question is, first of all, if you're talking about empires, what is an empire exactly? And uh, App Apple has a, a dictionary uh, uh, that uh, gave this particular rather simplified uh, definition. Wikipedia, um, and, and talking about empires, I have this particular quote, which sounds more better. Uh, several territories and people usually created by conquest, divided between a dominant center and subordinate peripheries, which sounds pretty, pretty accurate. Then again, uh, it's anything that calls itself an empire and you will see some, some odd things in here. So here's a quiz. How many empires do you think issued stamps? Um, 18. 10. You're very close. 17. Wow. And, and we'll get, we'll go through these. This is just an alphabetical list. And we're going to go through them according to what ways in which they were an empire. So in, in phil phil philately, um, clearly any stamp that says empire or emperor or imperial on it, or perhaps in other languages, is claiming to be an empire. There are all these different terms for emperor or king or the equivalent. And we're not quite sure which ones which were, were used, uh, being used would indicate that this place was an empire. So you have Tsar from uh, the Russian areas. Uh, and uh, that's obviously derived from the word Caesar, the name for the, the Roman emperors. And in Persia, you have Shah, Shahan Shah, and Padi Shah. In uh, Japan, the uh, emperor is called Tenno. And the empire is called Raikoku. China, the son of heaven, or Huangdi, august emperor, and Di Guo, emperor, imperial country. You look for these characters, even if you don't read Chinese, if you've got um, these particular information, you can look for these on the stamps. And we'll see, even that doesn't entirely cover uh, things in indication an empire. And uh, I have question marks here. Um, are there watermarks? I thought there was a British watermark that had uh, R-I instead of just R for the king. Does anyone uh, strike that they've seen something like that? Quite possible that there are some stamps that have uh, an indication of uh, an imperial claim in the watermark itself. Maybe it wasn't in stamps. Maybe it was somewhere else or the, the, the R-I, Regina Imperiatrix as well. Yeah. But also, um, for example, Indian stamps, we'll see, um, the Indian stamps have a particular crown on top of uh, uh, the, the monarch's image. Is this a crown, an imperial crown? And if you're wearing an imperial crown, does that indicate that you're, you're, you're an empire? But for example, in uh, Great Britain, there are a variety of different crowns. And uh, the monarch is crowned with the, what's called the imperial crown, which was made after Britain declared itself the empire of India. And so are there other symbols like that that specify an empire uh, rather than just a, a, a monarchy? Then, like I say, there are, there are empires that are known to be empires, but there's nothing on the stamps that would tell you that it's an empire. So we have all of these, these questions. Okay, so uh, the, we're gonna start off with empires that said we're an empire. I have another quiz question. What is the oldest stamp issuing empire? Say around. again. What what's what empire is has been the one that, that was established first in terms of being an empire? Austria Hungarian? No. Great Britain? No. France? No. Persia? No. China. What about Russia? Or no, Japan is that the UK? The, the the traditional in the traditional history of Japan, um, the Emperor Jimmu, six sixty BC, is claimed to be the first emperor. But uh, and he's also claimed to be a descendant of the Moon Goddess. So uh, you'd have to take that with a grain of salt. Uh, really, in third to sixth century AD, the uh, rulers of Japan took this title Tenno Emperor. 
And uh, so if you believe that, and if you believe that the constitutional monarch of Japan is still an emperor, um, Japan is the oldest uh, still existing empire. Did you look at China? I mean, obviously China was, um, was civilized, you know, even before Japan. Well, it depends on whether you count the traditional date or the really date. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and Japan, Japan is I mean, first. If you count uh, the actual date, then yes, China is first. We'll, we'll get to that in a moment. So next slide. But was it an emperor, an empire at that, or a bunch of states? Again, what do they claim to be? Is the title that they took? The intention was to take the same title as a Chinese emperor, and uh, even though they didn't conquer things. They China was the parts of Japan back then. Japan was not a unified state when when this started, and they did conquer other parts of Japan. So again, you, you can argue in and out all of this uh, at great length. So we, here we have some examples of where they actually had the word Imperial Japanese Post in in English uh, on the stamps, and the the earliest ones here for, for from eighteen. 76, where you can actually see those words. And those are the top two stamps are part of that set, that design. The first person to appear on a Japanese stamp was not the emperor. It was this a field marshal who was one of the uh, leading generals in the Sino-Japanese War. It's the first stamp in Japan that has a person's portrait on it. And as uh, we noted earlier, China. We have a better date really for China uh, Kun Shi Hongdi uh, claimed himself emperor, united the country in 221 BC. I think it's interesting that Japan, for instance, uh, th their first issues had both the Latin alphabet and their own language. Yeah. But after a while, they dropped the Latin alphabet. The first, the first issues of Japan did not have the, um, the Latin alphabet on them at all. And it was, they're, they're quite expensive stamps. And I didn't, haven't, again, I haven't looked carefully at the characters uh, uh, to figure out whether they, they used any of the words that might be taken as em empire. Right, right. I'm not even sure that these, the characters on this stamp here are, uh, that these characters say essentially Chinese Imperial Post or not. Uh, so these are the, the uh, Chinese ones that have the words clearly in a Latin script. In, in English, actually. And these started in 1879. Um, here's part of the same design from a stamp from 1908, which has a Chinese Imperial Post. And some of the others say uh, Imperial Chinese Post. Don't know why they switched the, the two uh, adjectives at one point. And there's this one set here that simply says Chinese Empire across the top. That's the only one that says Chinese Empire as such. And Ethiopia was mentioned. Ethiopia was fairly early, uh, 1270. Uh, some of the central Ethiopian kingdoms conquered some of the others and they declared themselves an empire. And there's this, these four stamps are the only ones that say Empire of Ethiopia in French. Uh, again, I don't read Amharic, so I can't uh, tell you what the uh, other inscriptions are, but certainly here's a clear claim that they were an empire. Okay, so uh, the next uh, empire is the Ottoman Empire, which of course there is no listing in Scott for the Ottoman Empire. It's uh, simply the early listings for Turkey, which is, I think is a terrible misnomer, but anyway, from the earliest uh, issues that they uh, issued until the end, past actually pen, past the end of World War I, uh, they issued stamps for the Ottoman Empire. And um, these particular series, where it's in uh, Latin characters, uh, 1876, and later overprints, including overprints for Eastern Rumelia on these stamps. And uh, postage dues for the design specifically say that. And most of the stamps uh, from the Ottoman Empire just say Devlet uh, Osmania, which is right here. This is the D. D V L T Osmania. And most of the stamps just say that. They don't have anything that says it in English. There are problems with the way Scott lists these stamps, because the regular stamps for Turkey are also listed, of course, under Turkey. And and uh, 
I have always objected to the um, Scott country of, quote, Mesopotamia, unquote, which really should be um, Ottoman Empire under British occupation, as some, some scholars should be. But anyway, that's the way Scott lists them. Bill, in the, in the inscription above the crescent. Yes. How many, how many words are, are within that inscription? Uh, three. The first thing here, starting here, P-U-S-T-T, -T, actually. I mean, just it is posta, post, posta. Uh -huh. And this is the, this is the, uh, the value. E Gurush, two piastres. Okay, now here we get to Austria. And the Austrians uh, did a thorough job on uh, labeling themselves. I said, this is the Imperial Royal Austrian Post. They, they, uh, obviously, in Austria-Hungary, the, the uh, emperor of Austria-Hungary was also king of Austria, and he was king of Hungary as well. And so that they had these various um, stamps that had both indications on there. And, and the earlier period, uh, it was just the Austrian Empire and included all the Habsburg lands, including those that weren't even physically attached to what we think of as Austria. And then when the Hungarian uh, people were given a, a particular uh, privilege in having the Austrian king be their king as well, it became the Austro-Hungarian Empire and they started using this uh, Kaiserlich Königliche uh, inscription. And they are also used for Bosnia and Herzegovina in its later phases. They, they took this over from the, uh, the Ottomans and at first they didn't uh, use these inscriptions on the Bosnian stamps. But later on, uh, just before World War II and to the end of World War II, they did that as well. And again, the Austro-Hungarian Empire is really something quite different from uh, the state of Austria as we know it today, but they're both listed by Scott under Austria. Here's France. Uh, France, of course, the first empire was um, Napoleon the first empire and the second empire was Napoleon the third's emperor empire. And there were fairly, uh, restricted number of stamps issued uh, with the Empire Francais at the top. And you'll recognize that these are exact same designs, uh, except that for this, they were REP period, Republic of France at the top. And they became uh, uh, a Republic again after this with different designs. In the French colonies, the first stamp of New Caledonia and a few of the earlier stamps of Reunion also uh, used its design. It's inter the reunion ones are interesting. They took the imperial stamps of France after the empire was gone and overprinted them for use in reunion. So you have uh, reunion stamps that say French empire. Uh, Mexico, you may not have thought of Mexico as an <laughs> empire, but uh, it was twice an empire. The first one before the stamp period, um, uh, Augustin de Iturbide was one of these uh, revolutionaries who managed to conquer the country. They wanted to find a European uh, princely house that would set the title of Emperor of Mexico and no one would take it. So he, he made himself uh, emperor in his own name. That didn't last very long. <clears throat> Neither did the second one, which was uh, imposed by Napoleon III, who put this guy Maximilian on the, uh, the Mexican throne for a while and <clears throat> French troops enforced this and then they left and that, that whole thing collapsed. So there's only this one set of stamps. Um, the, this is, this is a, uh, 121 is a district number and 866 is an abbreviation for 1866. The they also have versions of these that have um, a name here instead of a date. Some of the dates are 1866, and some of them just have the um, the number for the, the district that was involved. So there's a whole bunch of varieties you can collect here if you want to. Here's the British Empire, finally. Um, it was interesting when I was researching this, I found that there was a thing called the Act and Restraint of Appeals issued in 1533, which claimed that England is an empire. But the British have never been big about putting that as such on their stamps. The Indian stamps, which is really 
the real empire of Britain uh, mm -hmm. never said Indian Empire. That's why I have the question of what kind of crown George was uh, was wearing on his head when he appeared on the stamps. Um, these stamps for the British Empire exhibition in 1924 and 1925 are the only two British stamps uh, which actually say British Empire on them. Every Germany was mentioned earlier. Um, Reich is the question of uh, what does it really mean? You can say the kingdom by saying Königreich, the king, the king, uh, king's domain. Um, does Reich mean empire? No. Uh, it means kingdom. Uh, well, you know, I I really don't see um, if we have a clear way of distinguishing kingdoms from empires. Other than the choice of the word, what is the difference? Well, that's why I asked in the beginning. Generally, it means that a kingdom, a king, conquered territories that were not part of his domain. Not only that uh, they were not incorporated in his government, or anything, but probably the people there spoke a different language or had a different religion or were physically uh, uh, separate from the uh, original territory, which shared uh, the, a religion and a language. In that case, any, col any col colony indicates that, that you're an empire. Is that true in the case of Mexico, for example? No, I think, I think that these were, uh, those empires were a takeover of the entire original location of Mexico. It didn't have any colonies or, or extensions into areas that were not traditionally part of Mexico. When I, when I think of a kingdom, I think of a realm that has contiguous territory. All of it is connected uh, physically to, uh, to each other. Whereas an empire could be disparate portions of land spread apart from one another. Well, the Austrians certainly thought they were an empire, although they were uh, uh, contiguous. Um, mm. Because there were people who spoke German, people who spoke Hungarian, there were people who were Slavs, people who had Orthodox rather than Catholic uh, religion. And it certainly was a, a polygot a conglomeration which fell apart after the end of World War I. Well, that's, that's true. I should have modified my, my statement a bit, yeah. Because those are really distinct, uh, very distinct areas from one another. Of course, the empire we think of most of the empire perhaps is the Roman Empire, which clearly in, incorporated all sorts of areas that, that had nothing to do with the Latin speaking uh, Romans. But I like, I like the suggestion that an element to be an empire is the conquering of territory. I think that, 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 that I can believe that sounds true to me. Well, Germany, if you consider that they were an empire in 1871, uh, had conquered areas that spoke German. And it was, it was made an empire specifically, it was the kingdom of Prussia uh, leading the North German uh, Confederation, uh, when they finally um, took over the rest of Germany, they, they, I think they considered themselves an empire at that point. Certainly the German Kaiser, Caesar, had a title that indicated he was an emperor. The word, uh, the word Reich is related to the word Reichen or reach or extend. So I think the best translation for Reich is just the extent. The extent realm. of the places where a you know, realm is a good synonym. That's realm might be a good, a good thing there. So it's, it's ambiguous in terms of the actual word, but the German. Not in German, it isn't. Kaiser, Kaiser Wilhelm thought he was an emperor. Yes. He, and he had overseas territories. As you can see, there's this list. Uh, the early stamps of these countries were Deutsches Reich uh, overprints. So that. Uh, those stamps were not overprinted Deutsches Reich, but they were they were overprinted other things. So they were they were yes, Deutsches they were Reich overprinted stamps. Cameroon or yeah, but, yeah, but Carolinian the underlying, or the underlying the underlying stamps said Deutsches Reich, the uh, Germania stamps, among others. Now, all German stamps said Deutsches Reich at that point. Not the later issues of these countries. The later issues of Cameroon, for example, just said Cameroon. They didn't say Deutsches Reich on them at all. The overprint says Cameroon. The base stamp says Deutsches Reich. 
the early issues, the later issues of Cameroon just say Cameroon. The Hohenzollern yacht stamps do not say Deutsches Reich on them. Okay, and the interesting thing here is there was an old design uh, used um, after the Kaiser abdicated. And there was a sort of period in there in which they, they didn't have a new constitution. The Weimar constitution was in 1919. So that it was sort of ambiguous what was going on there in terms of the stamps. And even the, after the Weimar Republic established itself and issued its first issue of stamps, they issued another stamp, number 102, which was of the old uh, Deutsches Reich design. Rather interesting, and interesting in, indication of the chaos going on at that time. So when did, when did the German empire end? Not clear. How about an empire without an emperor? Oh, Do you think the United an States. empire that, that did not have an emperor? The UK. Other that would be the USA. UK, UK, uh, Victoria was <laughs> Empress of India. George VI was Emperor of India. You guys haven't been paying enough attention to your Portuguese stamps, believe it or not. Portuguese colonies, but not all of them, about, a, a, about a, what, eight or, eight or nine colonies here, issued stamps in 1938 that have the instruction Imperio Colonial Portuguese on them. Portugal itself, none of its stamps say this, only the colonies. This was done in 1938 when Salazar, who was dictator of Portugal, decided to take a tour of the colonies and they issued all these stamps that said this. So you have, um, this is an airmail stamp, but there was a regular whole, a very long series of stamps for all these countries, of regular stamps and, and, and airmails of this design. Plus for some of the colonies, um, this particular set commemorating the, the first voyage of the president to the colonies in 1938. And this was Salazar, who was not, did not have the title of emperor. So that's, that's a rather peculiar thing. Then there were empires that did not have any conquests of foreign people. Korea, again, like Japan, this was a copy of the Japanese and Chinese uh, uh, systems of government. Some of the stamps in 1903 they issued, there were four stamps that had this particular uh, inscription on it in French, claiming that Korea was an empire and that the, the Korean rulers definitely wanted the title emperor. And this happened even uh, shortly after this when the empire of Korea became uh, basically a Japanese uh, puppet state, a protectorate. So that's very odd. Manchu Kuo. Uh, it was a Japanese puppet state. The guy on the stamp here is Fu Yi the last emperor of China. And when it was first founded in this design, almost with the different inscription here, it was just called the state of Manchuria. In 1934, essentially they promoted Puyi. He became the emperor of the Manchu empire. And the inscription at the top here, according to Scott, says Manchu empire postal administration. Same design as the first issue, slightly different inscription. And obviously Manchu Kuo did not to go around conquering anybody. No, he looks like a uh, bookworm. Yeah, well, have you ever seen the, the, the movie, uh, The Last Emperor? Mm -hmm. Steve, Steve mentioned this earlier, Central African Empire, a very strange thing. <laughs> the Republic of Central Africa before and after this guy. He was president of the Republic before, then he lost the presidency. I forget whether he got it back again. And then uh, as president, uh, changed it into an empire. And supposedly um, this coronation, which is uh, commemorated here, uh, cost uh, the country half of its GDP for that year. And we're down to empires that were empires, but they never said so on their stamps, as far as I can tell. Brazil, um, 
the stamps portray Emperor Dom Pedro. They never say empire or emperor in any form. It, Dom Pedro was interesting in that uh, he was emperor of Brazil because the royal family of Portugal fled to Brazil when the Spanish uh, took over Brazil, uh, Portugal. And so this is uh, a, 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 an emperor who had lost his homeland, but came to send himself the emperor of, it, of its colony. And there are plenty of portraits in, but they never say emperor. Russia, the stamps of Russia never said empire. This is a, a case where perhaps the early stamps with the double eagle on them, uh, that's just an imperial eagle, maybe this crown on this stamp is an imperial crown rather than a royal crown. Who knows? I haven't, uh, I haven't looked enough into that to figure that out. And uh, this is the first stamp from Russia that has a picture on it. Uh, it's part of the set, a number of pictures of the Romanovs. And uh, there's a Nikki, the unfortunate Nicholas II. This says postage, two co seven kopecks. Bulgaria. This is this is one of the, one of the more interesting ones. Also, um, Ferdinand was prince of Bulgaria. In 1908, they annexed Eastern Rumelia, and he decided he was going to be Tsar. Now he's going to be the emperor. There's a they conquered Eastern Rumelia from the from the Ottomans, so he became Tsar in the middle of his reign. Then there was Boris the third had a fairly long reign. And then Simeon, the unfortunate Simeon, who, who uh, came under uh, Russian control at the end of World War II. And the interesting side eye here is that the house or the duchy of saxe coburg gotha was the place where these princes and czars came from originally. It also provided the rulers of the United Kingdom. You remember that in World War I, um, the Windsors changed their name from Saxe Coburg Gotha to Windsor to uh, serve their, their connection with Germany. But also the Belgian kings and the Portuguese kings were also uh, members of this particular uh, central German province of Thuringia. Uh, Coburg and Gotha were two separate pieces within Thuringia. There was also uh, a piece of this duchy uh, isolated inside uh, Bavaria. And Sax, or Sax uh, in German, uh, is also a very common uh, part of a name of uh, one of these small German states. There were two other, three other German states that started word Sax, which it perhaps relates to Saxony, I'm not sure. But it's, it's interesting, this little, this little German uh, duchy provided lots of the uh, uh, kings uh, and czars of Egypt, of, of, uh, of Europe. And here your Bulgarians are, there's, there's Ferdinand, there's Boris III, and there's Simeon II. Uh, that's the only stamp which has a picture of Simeon uh, II on it. And there's Iran. Iran is one of these interesting ones. Um, it, again, it's modeled on an ancient uh, tradition in the country, uh, the the Achaemenid uh, Persian Empire, uh, all of the rulers of that area after it fell tended to take the uh, the title either Shahan Shah or Padishah, and they they clearly refer to a king who is who is in fact an emperor, not just a king. And it's sort of like, the, what is a Reich? Is it, uh, is it a kingdom or is it an emperor? Well, the, the Persian words, Shah really means just king and Shahan Shah or Padi Shah means uh, emperor. Here are the Shahs of Iran. These are two different dynasties. Uh, the initial stamps were issued by the Qajar dynasty and there's Nasr ad-Din Shah Qajar. And then uh, he was overthrown by the Pahlavi, uh, one of the generals. Uh, there's Reza Shah Pahlavi, the uh, father of the Pushers, and we tend to think of as the Shah of Iran. And at the end, there is the, uh, the late Shah of Iran. Uh, 